We've got some breaking news here on CBS Sports HQ. Bellator bantamweight champion Sergio Pettis will not defend his title at Bellator 279 April 23rd. Pettis was participating in the World Grand Prix quarterfinals but suffered an injury, cannot compete in the tournament. The plan was for Sergio to co-headline the card with Rampion Stotts out in Hawaii. So with Pettis out, in comes former champion Juan Archuleta. It now becomes the interim bantamweight title fight at Bellator 279. Archuleta lost that fight to Sergio back at Bellator 258 in May. Unanimous decision this after he won the vacant title over Patchy Mix via UD. Both fights were at Mohegan Sun Arena in Uncasville, Connecticut. So here is what the card looks like live on Showtime, Saturday, April 23rd. Chris Seiberg, Arlene Blenko. Then Archuleta steps in against Stotts. Alima Leigh McFarlane returns home, Justine Kish there, and then the continuation of the tournament with Patchy Mix and Kyoji Horoguchi. And joining us now on CBS Sports HQ is the Spaniard, Juan Archuleta here. So Juan, tell me about your thoughts on joining this card now. Now you were always going to be in the tournament, but now you get the spotlight in Hawaii. Yeah, I'm very honored, obviously, and excited, uh, grateful for the opportunity. But, uh, you know, there's more to being a champion than just having the belt, right? Well, when I won the Bellator World title, I always knew how to carry myself as a champion. And this is just goes to show that I'm always ready. I'm always in the gym training. So this goes to show that when you are ready for always prepared, you get an opportunity like this of a lifetime. And uh, I'm ready to get my belt back. For your fans that are now learning of this news, what's your mindset now as you're about a month away? I mean, I've always been ready to fight. I haven't fought since last June, um, and I've been itching for a fight. And I got to reinvent myself and stick back to get back to who I was as a fighter. And um, right now, my fans are going to expect some very exciting news. And, uh, you know, aloha to all my fans that are getting ready to go, uh, be able to hear the news and get travel plans ready to go out to Hawaii. Take me through your camp plans and getting ready for Rafael Stotts. Give me a scouting report if you can. Yeah, thankfully for me, I've been training, like I said, the la uh, since I lost my title. So nothing changes for me. I've been getting strong, been getting ready. Um, for me, Stotts is just in the way of getting my title and a way of getting uh, my million dollar check that I deserve for myself. So this is the first step to a million dollars. And not only that, I get to fight for my world title and, uh, you know, one man's loss is another man's gain. And um, I pray for uh, for Sergio that he gets well and he's back. And I'll be holding that title for him when he gets back and giving him the first um, defense. Anything when you're going to begin stats, at least from what you've seen or how you are preparing, some of the things that you will be looking out for, making sure that you've got your thing in check for that fight. Yeah, thankfully, he fights exactly like Sergio Pettis. Um, he sits back and he tries to counter people a lot, and he's kind of a boring fighter. Um, he tries to use his wrestling and secure the back and just take things very slow. He wants to fight on his terms. Um, you know, he does get rocked a lot. Uh, his, his chin is very open and easy to hit. So, you know, and he gets wobbled a lot. So I'm going to have to go expose that. I'm going to go push my gas tank and see how much gas he has in his tank, and let's see who runs out first. Juan, before I let you go, is, take me through the mindset of a fighter not only coming into an interrupt strap title fight here, but also just the tournament format, knowing that you're facing the best of the best, and if you win, essentially, it's going to be a title defense each and every time. Yeah, I was put in a very similar position um, about two years ago when I fought um, um, uh, Pitbull, uh, which was the first round of the featherweight division uh, uh, tournament. and. I fought the champion first and I lost. And uh, ever since then, I've been itching to get back into a tournament and uh, to be able to win a million dollars. So this one right here, it's all about advancing, winning every position. And if you win every position, then you're definitely going to win the fight. So that's my goal right now is winning every position and the, and these exchanges that we're going to have. I know he's going to be loud and boisterous while we're in the cage, but I'm not going to let it detour my game plan. I'm going to go there and do exactly what I need to do, and that's win. Juan, certainly appreciate the time. Stay safe. Be well. We'll see you at Bellator 279 in Hawaii. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. I hope you guys enjoy. I'm excited. Aloha. and Have some fun. All right. That was the former champ, Juan Archuleta, joining us here on CBS Sports HQ and joining us on set.
Yes, you are seeing it right now. The guys from Morning Combat, Brian Campbell and Luke Thomas in South Florida. More on that on why they're down here in just a bit. But guys, we just talked to Juan Archuleta, the changes to the Bellator 279 card. Luke, I'll give you first word. What do you think about this change? It's about as good of a replacement as you're going to find, the former world champion, as we all know. Also, something to keep in mind here, Bellator still has not released the brackets for the Bantamweight Grand Prix. So subbing him in is great because you get Ko Koji Horiguchi versus Patchy Mix, and I want to let who is accustomed to these five-round fights, carrying that kind of, you heard him talking about my title, even though he lost it fair and square. So that's about as good as you're going to get, but we still need to see, A, who's going to replace, obviously, the one person gone. And also, it has to be terrible to lose your champion if you're Bellator because the best case scenario is a very good fighter will win, but it won't be the actual champion. It won't be the guy at bantamweight. He will still have to fight for a title at some other later point. I think that's called, though, if I can take the floor here, uh, a cliffhanger, though. This tournament <laughs> going to crown a, a million-dollar winner, of course, is going to have somebody with that interim strap, but the sequel is going to be that fight against Sergio Pettis when he comes back. One thing I do want to say, and Juan Archuleta summed it up perfectly, you talk about opportunist uh, opportunities for an opportunist. Wow. Uh, Glad you're here, Brian. Sitting, look, uh, this is a bad luck sport. There's so many ways to lose. There's so many hard, unhappy endings. For Juan Archuleta, not too far removed from losing that title to Sergio Pettis, to take that much time off, reinvent himself me mentally, as he said, and now walk into an interim title opportunity. And if he wins this, kind of becomes the face of this tournament moving forward. For a former champion, best case scenario in terms of your coming back on that. That's the one thing with the format that we've seen from the featherweights and the light heavyweight that a tournament style injuries or whatnot can kind of derail what we anticipate that, that we'll see. But in terms of Juan Archuleta, what does he do well, Luke? What does he not do well when we're going up against this stock fight? Well, he, let's talk about the good parts, right? So he's got an incredible motor. I mean, this guy can go five rounds, no problem. If you are banking on Juan Archuleta getting tired, you're gonna get tired waiting for that. So the first thing I would say is high output, high cardio. The way in which he fights is he can mix in wrestling and often does, but he likes to joust. He starts from way outside, he finds entries to pot shot, and then he exits. And he does this over and over, and if it's successful, he'll build volume behind it so that by the third, fourth, fifth rounds, he has this kind of attack where it just feels like you're getting rained on. In terms of some of the limits though, a guy like, for example, Sergio Pettis was able to pick his shots and as Archuleta was closing the distance, he was catching him clean every time coming in. So this is an opportunity, you heard him say to you, took some time, went back to the lab, working on his game, he's still young. Again, having good cardio is such an important foundation for all the other things you can build. If he can tighten up some of his distance closing, some of his entries, he's already got so many other weapons that not only won him a title, it could win him another one. Uh, he's not that young. He's 37, but the high motor does. 37. You, you got to check the stat sheet, but the high Apparently. motor puts him in, in a great opportunity to do that. The changes, though, from what he learned in the loss of Sergio Pettis, are going to be key because what we've learned up to this point of Juan Archuleta is he can beat the very best. But if you are technically elite and have the speed and the know-how to carry out a game plan, you can't beat this guy. I need more wrinkles out of Archuleta. And I think even though he thinks Rafael Stotts is similar style to Sergio Pettis, he's going to have to fight off that takedown a lot more than he did against Pettis in their matchup. Quick thought on Sergio Pettis, the champ. We don't know the extent of that injury, but obviously out of the tournament now. What do we think about Sergio? It's a tough spot to be in. But it's also a potential boon for him as champion because you're not afforded any advantages going through these Grand Prix tournaments as the champion. Sure, you get the same access to that million dollar prize that now Sergio Pettis will not be able to cash in on, but you gotta go five hard rounds every stop. You're the champion. You're the biggest fight available to the guy you're, you're facing across the cage. Now Pettis gets a chance to step back. Let all of them get in the meat grinder for that short period of time, make fun fights against one another, and then face the winner coming out. Not the strategy he would have endure, you know, put in there, but one that could help him. I will say that I'll add there. Remember, he beat Koji Horiguchi, but he was losing every minute of that fight up until he won with the spinning back fist. Um, so what I would say is, had he gone through the tournament as it was structured and won, that would have been the most validating thing he possibly could do. Not to say he's not a legitimate champion, but what I mean to say is some of those doubts that were planted during that fight would be erased if he could push through the tournament. On the other hand, the good side is, He's not going to get put through that meat grinder where you're having to fight these really difficult fights all the time against the very best guys they can find. He's going to be able to pick his shots a little bit more by waiting for the tournament winner. So some pluses and some minuses there, but I would say a net okay thing for him. All right, got about a minute and a half here. Let's wrap things up. As for the card itself, it's coming off the heels of McKee Pitbull 2 roughly a week after. We still have a stacked card BC laid out for me. 
This is a loaded card, and you love when MMA promoters take the fights to the people that are hungry and waiting for them. We've seen that UFC going to England. We're seeing that Bellator going to Ireland. Now also Hawaii. It's going to be a raucous backdrop, but look at that. The rematch atop for the featherweight title. Chris Cyborg welcoming in a retooled Arlene Buenco with the fight of the night, guys. It might be that first one. Patchy Mix, Kyoji Horiguchi, another World Grand Prix quarterfinal bout. Horiguchi might be the favorite to win this whole thing, and he just got knocked out brutally by the champion in one of the you know viral moments of a, of a lifetime. So uh, no lack of star power or interesting fights on this. Just a quick app for folks who may not understand or appreciate this. Divisions over time assert themselves as the most preeminent one in the sport for a long time. 205 pounds was your glamour division. With the rise of Conor McGregor, it was 155. Now, both of those divisions still have some good parts to them, especially 155, but 135 is your new ascended division. Globally, you can, you can swing a dead cat and find an organization somewhere that has absolute monsters at 135 pounds. Bellator has a whole lot of them. That's why they're putting them together. So understand, this tournament is happening, not just because they happen to have good guys, but because this is the division that everywhere is on fire right now. Part of the West Coast swing in April with that Hawaii double, or thanks to Luke Thomas and Brian Campbell, the guys at Morning Combat award-winning tandem. By the way, before we go, real quickly, why are you guys in South Florida? Can your fans, can you tell them? Business. It's top secret, Tommy, like how you do your hair every morning. Download and follow today. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.